In this video generated by a comment on my shop tour video, we'll spend a little bit of time looking at my downdraft table. So we'll start this video here at the downdraft table. Before I uh, decided to build the table, I actually looked at building a downdraft box. I ended up going this route for a, a few different reasons. First was I was pretty sure that if I had to get out this downdraft box and hook it up, I would be lazy and not likely to use it as often as I should. The second consideration was that if I had a box like this, I would need somewhere to store that. Storing large things in my shop is always an issue because I don't have a ton of space. That sort of led me in the direction of wanting to build a built-in table. It turned out I had this space available. I had built my miter saw station, which is here. On this side of the downdraft table, it is a utility sink. And so there was kind of this hole along this wall because of this column that's right here it's not really conducive to having any sort of tool in here there's not a lot of space so it was an obvious place to build a cabinet to provide some kind of storage yeah there's not great access here but for sanding it's probably fine it turned out that four downdraft panels fit in this space just about perfectly downdraft table with storage underneath in this location was the way i wanted to go the next thing i had to look at was kind of what were my overall constraints. So as I talked about, I got the miter saw station here and the utility sink here. So that set the, the width, the overall width of the cabinet that I would build. The depth, I could have built it as deep as the miter saw station, which sticks out about three inches further than the downdraft, but then that would really restrict my ability to get through this space here. There wasn't really any point in going much less depth than the utility sink so i decided to just make this cabinet stick out the same depth as the utility sink and that works out just about perfectly with the the cabinet and then the box inside that the down that holds these downdraft panels then the next was the height and what i decided was i wanted to have the height of the cabinet such that the tops of these grommets would sit flush or just slightly below the surface of the miter saw station so it was a definite requirement that these panels could not sit proud of this surface. I wanted to make sure that I could dial in the height once everything was put in place so that these grommets would basically be at the exact same level as the surface of the miter saw station. Now I started with the, the box. There's a box that sits inside of here underneath these panels. Then I built most of it out of scraps. The doors on here are sliding doors. The fact that this column right here is so close Swinging doors just would not have worked. I wouldn't be able to open them very far. I didn't start with plans. I built the box that the downdraft panels sit on, and then I used scraps and built the cabinet around the box based on those dimension constraints that I talked about. I started with a known set of required dimensions I had to stay within and a known size of the downdraft panels, and I just kind of built from there. So what we'll do next is we'll move on to my computer. I built a quick SketchUp model of this. It's not the exact dimensions of how I built this, but it's pretty darn close. So before switching over to the computer, I actually wanted to look at uh, one more thing. So this box that sits in here, it just sits down inside of the top of the cabinet. Tack these four pieces in, hold the box in so it can't come out. The box is about three inches deep. That wasn't anything super specific. In fact, it may have just been the size of pieces of plywood that I had. This is a piece of half inch plywood on the bottom. Same plywood that I used for the walls was just a leftover piece of that. These large dust ports I got off Amazon and there were grates covering the four inch opening in the bottom. I wasn't really concerned about stuff going down through the downdraft table. I was more concerned about having a lot of airflow. And that was actually another consideration of why I decided to go with the table as opposed to a box. With a box that sat on top of my workbench, it would likely have a single four inch dust port on the side. And with this, because I already had this six inch pipe that came over to this area for the miter saw, I was able to add 
a double four inch connection comes off of a Y. It takes a six inch into two four inch flex hoses and those connect to these two large dust ports here, giving me really a lot of airflow and there really is no uh, dust escaping. When I first did my dust collection ducting, I didn't know I was gonna build this downdraft table. This type of clamp together piping is expensive, but it saved me a lot of headache when I decided I wanted to add this downdraft table because I was able to just buy a few more parts and reconfigure how this, this piping here was done and then add these two blast gates so I can switch between either providing these two hoses provide the dust collection for the miter saw. These two hoses provide the dust collection for these two ports on the downdraft table. Then we'll move to the computer and we'll look at a model of the entire cabinet and you can see a little bit more in detail about how it was built. Before we look at the model and sketch up, I'll show you a better view of what those dust ports. Here you can get a good view of what that, that grate was like and how thick these parts of the grate were. I decided I'd rather not have those obstructions to the airflow because I wasn't really concerned about stuff going down through the downdraft table. So I, I cut those out and got rid of them. Another thing to notice on these is they have these three rectangular holes in the side here, which I think are just to provide another option for mounting this hood, depending on how you're using it. For me, they were just completely useless and just provided you know, small but unnecessary openings. So I, I covered them over with tape. Here is a model at SketchUp. It's not the exact dimensions of what I built, but it's, it's pretty close. And here you can see downdraft box that sits in the top of the cabinet. Very simple construction three inch deep sides, half inch piece of plywood on the bottom with openings cut for the dust ports, support members across here. Each downdraft panel takes up one of these quadrants. No fancy joint or anything, just butt joints screwed in from the outside, bottom screwed on from the bottom. But just a very simple um, cabinet carcass construction. All the pieces, cross pieces here, back, front, front and back, and in the on the bottom, they are all connected to these side panels with pocket hole screws. This back unnecessary for it to be a three quarter inch thick piece of plywood. However, I had a scrap piece. I needed a back so that stuff wasn't falling out of the back of my cabinet because. This cabinet doesn't sit against the wall. There's a gap required for the dust hoses to come down and go through this opening and the dust hoses that go to the miter saw station. Bottom panel is just a quarter inch piece of plywood that I had laying around that good enough size. I was able to trim it to fit. The downdraft box sits on these two runners that are attached such that when the box is in place, it sits perfectly flush with the top of the sides of the cabinet. And then these four blocks in the corners just lock the box in from moving side to side on those runners. Next, we'll talk about down here, have these two pieces here. An idea I got from a video from Jay Bates's channel and I'll put a link down below but in his video where he built his miter saw station he had these on each piece of each cabinet piece of his miter saw station and so I used it building my miter saw station and then used it again here so the, each one of these is a piece of two by four so one piece of two by four cut to length and then ripped in half to provide the two pieces on either side near each end drill a hole all the way through. In the bottom, tap in a, uh, a T-nut and that accepts whatever size bolt you'd like to use for your adjustable feet. And then you get four bolts, thread them into the T-nuts, and now you have adjustable feet. That served two purposes for me. First was obviously it allowed me to level the cabinet, which is important. This concrete floor here is nowhere near level, so I need that adjustment. And then uh, also allowed me to dial in the height of this to be precisely where I needed it to be. As I spoke about before, I wanted the tops of those panels, those downdraft panels, when they were installed, to be exactly flush or maybe just slightly below the surface of the miter saw station, which is over on this side. So I could build the cabinet 
where it would get me close, but just a little shy of that, knowing that once I put everything in place while leveling the cabinet, I could also adjust the height and get those panels exactly where I needed them to be. And so that's what I did. And then the last thing we'll talk about, well, two more things. So the box is just dropped into the top of the cabinet, and then I tacked down these three quarter inch pieces of plywood. They hold the box in place, and they provide what holds the downdraft panels in place from moving front to back, side to side. I put the downdraft panels in place, cut out these pieces, and then I laid them down snug against the downdraft panels and tacked them in place. So they provide two functions, keep the box into the top of the cabinet, and they hold the downdraft panels in place. Lastly are these trim pieces. So the trim serves a, you know, a visual function of it, it matches the trim pieces on the miter saw cabinet that's next to it, hides the edges, the exposed edges of the plywood here in the front. This trim piece and then this trim piece provide the, the grooves and runners for the sliding doors. The sliding doors are quarter inch, nominal quarter inch plywood panels. Um, so these are quarter inch grooves just cut with my full kerf table saw blade, quarter inch by quarter inch uh, grooves. And given that the plywood is, you know, thinner than a quarter inch is thick, they fit in there nicely, you know, that's not snug. They slide easily side back and forth in these grooves. So one door in the front groove, one door in the other groove with their handles on opposite ends. So I can, uh, so they, it works out great on the top, this, this, plywood piece here of the case provides the back edge um, for the groove. The way, the way the grooves worked out, since this is a three quarter inch thick piece of wood here, I've got an eighth of an inch and then a quarter of an inch groove. So that takes me halfway across, an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch groove. So then I need a backstop for that back panel. And this plywood provides that backstop on this side. On the bottom, the, the plywood panels that I had available to me to make my doors out of, again, just using stuff I had in the shop. They weren't quite, turned out that they weren't quite tall enough for how big I left this opening. And so on the bottom, I had to make this extra little strip to provide that holding piece for this back groove here on the bottom. See, there's this extra strip here on the back. The last thing I'll do before wrapping up, I'll turn on the downdraft table, demonstrate the the airflow that I get out of the downdraft table. And that'll be the last thing as we wrap up. I've scooped a bunch of dust out of the separator on my shop back. Tried to get a bunch of the really light, fine, fluffy dust out of there. Here, let me throw a little bit of, just, just throw it up into the air in front of it. And there's just dust floating all around in the air above the downdraft. And now I'll turn on the downdraft. I'll throw some more dust up into the air with the downdraft on and hopefully you can see this but it just nothing is floating around at all everything disappears straight down into the table now not everything goes through the holes but it's all sucked down to the table and if I do start messing around with it none of it flies up from the table it all is going straight down into the holes Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified of new videos. Be sure to check out the description below where I'll have links to my website and social media. There will also be other information and links relevant to this video. Thanks again and see you next time.